Welcome to My Wild Magic with me, your host, Adrian Cobb. Join me on a journey back home to your truest self in this inspiring, enlightening, and entertaining show. After a near-death experience in a car crash at 15 years old, I made a choice to stay and brought back with me three simple truths that I found from the other side. Love is all there is. Our time is over here quicker than we think. And we all have a purpose, a soul blueprint to fulfill. On this show, you will find a higher purpose, a creative expression, and unique soul attributes that you can bring forth into this world. Stay tuned with me for the next hour and find your higher purpose on My Wild Magic, starting now. Welcome. I am Adrian Cobb, and you're listening to My Wild Magic with Adrian on Transformation Talk Radio. And today we have our guest on the show, who is Joanne Eisen. Um, I've known Joanne for quite some time, and uh, she is an extraordinary medium, an animal communicator, and a clairvoyant. And she's going to be talking us uh, through the show today with how to communicate with our own soul energy and how to maybe change the conversations within our own head to have a better quality life. So welcome, Joanne. Thank you. And thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be a guest on your show. Yeah. <laughs> well, she said she's had me a guest on her show uh, yeah. many times. And Joanne, your show again is... Uh, uh, I have a show on YouTube and Facebook called Reach the Unlimited, and it's similar to this. I do interviews with people, just kind of challenge people's thinking and have them kind of come out of their comfort zone. Yeah, so now I get the opportunity to interview you, so it's a very nice thing. So, um, so you know, you have a plethora of different things that you, you do with people. Like I just said, you do clairvoyant work, intuitive soul readings, you do animal communication, which... Um, I call you all the time about my little kitty and then, um, you know, in mediumship and stuff like that. So tell me a little bit about how you got into this line of work and how it all kind of comes together under one umbrella, since you have so many different faculties, you bring people. Thank you for asking. Uh, the way that I came into this was actually through you, but the, the journey to get to you is I was a, a runner very much into athletics and health and fitness. And uh, which was good for me because I was working on the external part of what I needed to work on first before the spiritual part. And when I was at the gym, I had a friend who I would talk to and work out quite often. And he told me that I needed to call you. And I was nowhere even close to spirituality, woo woo, mediumship, card readings, clairvoyance, anything. I was just being me in a physical way. So what I did is I started my journey in the physical arena where I was into herbology. I actually was going to be a naturopath. I was doing blood work. I, uh, well, I said iridology, herbology. I was into all of those things and I was working out very extensively. I was really working on the outer part of my body. But what I realized is that there was something missing internal and I needed to start working on that. And that's where you came in and you and I have been working together for a long time. And, and I have just grown so exponentially through working with you. And so that's when I started then tapping into the truth of who I was, which was all of that woo woo stuff that I had as a child that nobody understood and it particularly liked because I would be the truth sayer in the family and that didn't play very well. So that started my journey then into the more spiritual side of my life. Yeah. And, um, you know, we really do as human beings, we have our physical body, which some people just really, you know, we really mm -hmm. love that kind of energy, mm -hmm. or there is also, we can go, some of us are highly emotional. So we'll go into the emotional aspect of our energy. Um, and then sometimes, you know, people who are very mental or sometimes it's spirituality, but really I find it doesn't matter which body you come at, whichever one you tend to house yourself mostly in. But, you know, being able to integrate all of them to where you have good physical habits, you have healthy emotional connection within yourself and others, uh, good spiritual practices, and, you know, good mental thoughts and stuff. So I like that you came into the physical body and it, you know, I think it always kind of leads us where we need to go. So um, let us know a little bit about um, the spectrum. And now that you've kind of opened up to the spiritual realm, what kind of goes on there for you? 
Well, like I always offer? knew that in the beginning, I was very much into organics, eating healthy, getting exercise, but I always spoke about what you think you create, even though I wasn't quite on that page completely knowing what I was saying. And this mind, body, and spirit, you have to have it all work together. And so what I started doing was um, really just doing the inner work, which I think is the first part of growing. And so what I, I started doing then is going into more of the card reading and the, you know, that kind of thing, working with people more clairvoyantly. What I do now, I'm not answering your question, though. I know I'm not. What I do now. All right, you're doing good. Yeah. I, I jumped. Uh, what I do now is I do intuitive work. And so in the intuitive work, I use all of the things that I do. Um, it just, I listen, like you were saying, you listen to the soul's need or what the desire is. Because for me, when I first started to even touch on the soul part of what I was doing, wasn't going to happen. I needed to do the healing on the external. So I do do work with the soul. And then I also am an evidential medium, which an ev evidential medium is someone who brings evidence as well as the essence of your loved ones that have passed over. And for my experience, and the reason I got into that was my father had passed away and I really hated my father. And at some point when I was going through my journey of, of you know, changing who I was, I knew that it was really important for me to heal that relationship with my father. So through mediumship, I've been able to really heal myself with understanding why my father was the way that he was in this physical form. And so that's why I do mediumship. It's not just to connect someone to their loved one just for no reason. It's all about the healing process that your loved ones on the other side will bring to you. And then I also use through all of my different things. I do healing modalities. I've done a couple of different ones. Uh, emotional integrative tech, uh, therapy is something that I do use more often. Mm -hmm. um, but I also um, love doing like, you know, evaluating how you're doing in many different levels. That's one of my passions. Mm -hmm. Where do I need to go? What, what is really off with you and how do we make that better? Yeah. What is off with you and how do you make it better? That's like the name of the game every single day, I think, for uh, if you're a human being on the planet at this point. <laughs> so uh, I am a little curious also that um, some people have been raised with more of a religious background as well, which is one reason they don't necessarily just open up to their spirituality right away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, did you were you raised also with a more religious or conservative background? Well, that was one of my biggest challenge. And as you remember, I would challenge you often because I was raised in a Catholic religion, but I also went into a more Orthodox Jewish religion when I was younger and raised my kids in that religion. So for me to come out of religious thoughts into what I do now was a big step and a challenge for me. And one of the reasons that I started my show, Reach the Unlimited, was because when you're in a certain paradigm, it's what you see, believe, and feel. You can't think outside of that. And there's many different ways or reasons that that would happen. For me, I had a very strong belief system of, you know, you're going to go to hell. You're not talking to the right God. You're not, this is not in the Bible. This, you know, all the, the, the programming that was in my head. And so I spent many years undoing that. And so my passion now is to help people to listen, because one of the things that I found with people is that we have this belief system and then we fail to listen to other people's ideas or thinking, which by listening doesn't mean that you have to own or agree to what somebody else thinks. It just means that you're hearing it and you're assimilating, but you make the decision on what you feel is right. And that changes over time. So for me, I went from a very religious uh, background mm -hmm. to very religious in a different way. I still believe in spirituality. I still believe in a lot of the things mm -hmm. that I believed in when I was in a religion or organized religion. I just don't see it in the same way. Yeah. Yeah. And I would agree with that. And sometimes I think that another factor I've noticed in doing sessions with people mm -hmm. is that there is a history, not only in our biological upbringing, maybe that might be religious or certain partners, maybe we get with that are religious but also that we carry it from past lives. And I know, you know, from working with you, you, you do have some very strong past lives where maybe you were in the Catholic or the Jewish religions in your past lives, which gives you all of that information and wisdom and understanding as well. 
really, I think to build on with what you're doing in this lifetime spiritually, but some of those belief systems, sometimes we can have, um, faulty, you know, spiritual belief systems. Like for instance, a, a popular one is if you look at maybe, um, the monks, you know, vow of poverty or the, you know, that may not be necessary any longer. Like it probably served in a past life, but in time, sometimes people that have financial issues are because they have a pious belief system or a spiritual belief system around if I'm, uh, if I have poverty, that means I'm more spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big one that I find that plays out with people or their love, their sexuality. That's another one where religion sometimes has a certain dogma to it that um, may not be as free now. Yeah. So it sounds like you've had kind of a journey yes, I have. through that, but it also seems like you've done a really good job integrating all those aspects of your religion, whether it's past lives or this lifetime to kind of build into maybe a more, um, just a more evolved or expanded aspect of spirituality um, for what you're doing. And so what, in terms of some of the techniques that you use right now and processes, what's one of your favorite ones that you do right now? Right now, you go to. I would say that, well, I do coaching and I love doing that. I love to listen to people and, and hear the things that they don't hear, like you do, like hear those special things that will help them within their life. Uh, but I absolutely love mediumship. It's a passion of mine. Um, I love being able to connect people back to their loved ones and, and find out truths about what maybe they didn't understand about that person's life. But I would say my top thing that I love to do the, the most would be my show in sharing people and people's ideas, because I'm really a thinker and I like to make people think, think outside the box. You don't have to go outside the box, but think outside the box, <laughs> at least listen. And then, and, you know, and then you just walk away going, yeah, I believe that. I mean, I constantly am reading something or hearing somebody who's talking about something that's challenging for me. And it gives me the freedom to be able to choose for myself what I want to believe. And that's what I have a passion to help other people see. They don't have to yeah. believe everything. Well, one thing I love about belief systems, honestly, is annihilating them, <laughs> you know, <laughs> annihilating them. Because what I've known is uh, last year, I believed this and year, this year I don't, and I'm still alive. And <laughs> five years ago, I believed this and now I don't, and I'm still alive. And right. what I've noticed is every time I let go of a belief system, I think that being in human form, belief systems are kind of part of the structure of our humanness. And so they're important to have because they ground us here, but yeah. it really excites me every time I let go of one, right. because I end up becoming this different, better version of myself. Every single time I let go of this prejudice, this judgment, this criticism, this fear, this, this is the way this is the best, you know, I just find there's more freedom on the other side. So, um, you know, systems, yeah. I love that. But the other side of that is I love when I have a really, really strong belief system of mm -hmm. something and then I question it and I can safely and honestly come back and say, I still believe this. So there's yeah. that side of it too. You know, well, and the deeper truth. Yeah. The one without all the fluff to it. So, uh, okay. So hold that thought. We are going to take a quick break here. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment with Joanne Eisen. Welcome back. All right. So Joanne, um, Joanne Eisen, we have her on as a gift, uh, a guest today, and she has many different spiritual gifts. We're kind of talking a little about the journey that she's had in order to get to where she is of being able to be of service to others. Now that she's been of service to me quite a few times. Um, and you just have this really instinctual energy. I find to the inner listening. And, um, when you're talking about inner listening, there's many different forms of clairvoyance, there's that clear cognizant, higher knowing, which I think you definitely have, uh, clear visual, but clear audio, which is one I have. And it sounds like that's what you're kind of describing is that when you're listening to somebody talk, you're not only being that compassionate witness for their soul, which has a healing element all to its own, just to be heard is quite healing, I think, for people. Um, but you're listening more on a soul level. So you're hearing things maybe sometimes below the level of their awareness so that you can reflect that back. Um, do you feel that's true for you that you are clear audience listen on a soul level and can help people with 
that energy? Well, the beauty about mediumship, when I first started, um, I really didn't know. I, I never was interested in mediumship. I was afraid of spirits. It was like, I'm going to go hide in the closet. You all do what you want to do. I'm not doing this. And uh, one day I got a tap on the shoulder and, and I knew that that was something that I was going to go into. And through my process of learning and exploring that, I found that one of the best ways to be a medium is to use all of your clairs at the same time. Yeah. So that's what I've developed now is I have my go-to that are the most prominent, but I use all of them. So I feel like when I'm tapping into somebody's soul, I'm doing it in a kind of an overall way where it comes from that knowing deep within me. And then I'm having the other clairs that are um, taking effect as well as that. Yeah. And then Joanne is saying the word clairs. Um, that is a word that sort of indicates all the different forms of uh, clairintuitive abilities like claircognizant, clairvoyance, clairaudient, uh, clairessence, uh, anyway. And there was a show that I did with, uh, Emily Matwio, and she's written a whole book on the different types of clairs and how to access them. So if you're interested, you could check out a different podcast that I do with Emily Matwio. Um, yeah, fascinating really, um, how she's kind of like unfolded that. And, um, yeah, so, with that, then when you're working with mediumship, connecting people to a loved one, what's kind of the primary of that for you? Like, what do you mostly focus on? What's your process with that with somebody? Um, well, for me, it's why are you here? What is your objective? What are you hoping to gain from it? And but in the midst of doing that, I still will tap into what is in your best and highest good. What is the most important thing for you to hear from that loved one? And some, like sometimes people think we, to go see a medium, you can say, okay, I would like my father and I would like to know this about my father. And a medium can do that. But with the spiritual world, they're not there just to give us like, where's the treasure or am I going to stay with my husband or things like that? They do do that and they can do that. But oftentimes they really have a, a lesson that they want to teach you or something that they want to share with you. And that's more of what I try to do is I listen to what your need is, but then I also listen to what the communicator, your loved one on the other side is wanting to share with you. So sometimes you could want your father there and your mother would come through because she has an important piece of information for you. That's going to be more important than what your father may have to do. So it's really interesting how you can go in with something but you could come out with something completely different based on your need. Well, and so the other thing about working with people who've crossed over that I'm curious about is that um, sometimes we have um, people in our life, whether it be parents or other people, that maybe we're not um, 100%, uh, maybe not the best version of themselves <laughs> in human form. Yeah. And so then you're like, well, why should I accept guidance from this person? who was very imbalanced or harmful, or I didn't even know them. Some people don't even know their parents. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so what happens when they get to the other side? I love that question. A lot of people have that question. This is only going to come from my opinion and from my experience. I can only speak from that point. I can't really say what's actually happening on the other side because I'm not there. But from my experience, when you're here in this human form, you're here for a lesson and you're living your life the best you can under the conditions you're at, which is not what you are as a spirit. As a spirit, we're energy. It's all energy. And so you come for an experience, you go back home to be able to kind of unpack whatever it was that you learned. And you're not that person. So when I'm connecting to a loved one on the other side, I'm not connecting to their energy as a soul because you, if I were to connect with your father, I'm not going to connect with him as a soul because you're not going to understand that. It's not a language that a normal person, right? A person that's just walking every day is going to say, oh yeah, I'm connected to my father because I know his energetic pattern. You would, but a lot of people wouldn't. So when I connect to someone's loved one, they're coming back as they were as that human being. And that's where they're speaking from. So when they come back, they're wanting to share with you because I've had many people that did not want to talk to their loved one on the other side for many different reasons. When they come back, they're not coming back to rehash what it was that they were as a curmudgeon on this planet when they were here. 
they're coming back to help you with your healing. And so a lot of people, like I had one client that would not talk to her father, period. He, she would come to talk to other parts of her family, but she did not want to hear from her father. Hands down, don't even go there. And so a couple of times when I first was doing readings with her, her father would try to sneak in in different ways. And I'd be like, ah, I know what you're doing. Not going to happen. And, but eventually she had to open up to, and wanted to open up to what was the healing that she could gain from her father. And that brought her a lot of peace. Like it brought me now that I've interacted with my father on the other side, it brings you peace and healing to understand that they had their every person is the way that they are for a reason. Yeah. They don't get there for no reason. So being able to understand what their process was helps you to understand what they did and why they doesn't make it okay. We're not ever saying it makes it okay, but it does help with understanding to help you to heal. And that's what I try to do is help the, the understanding if you're open to it. Now, some people just don't want to do it. They probably never will want to do it. And that's okay because we can heal like you do, right? In many different ways, we can heal from different experiences that we've had. Mediumship is just one of the ways that you can utilize. Yeah. And, um, you know, I find that it can sometimes just a, a bit of a process, but I find that the understanding leads to compassion. Yes. And the compassion leads to forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And the forgiveness leads to wholeness. Exactly. So it's worth the journey. Even if you have somebody you don't want to deal with, as a matter of fact, I think that we hold up our own life mm -hmm. by holding up a wall with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, I mean, sometimes we need to have a healthy boundary with something or someone, right? right. But, you know, once they're crossed over, there's not really, they're not really there necessarily to harm us. I mean, I find that most spirits, most beings that cross over, um, kind of just return back to their light body. They're not holding all that pain or that shadowy energy. And then when I have come across people who were just a bit thick headed on the other side, as, as thick headed as they were on physical side, they have angels governing them. Mm -hmm. So I have worked with people before where that soul will come forth, but because they might have created so much harm yeah. with that person or other people, they mm -hmm. have angels kind of watching over and sort of governing the situation to make sure that soul is still learning and able to unravel some stuff, but not able to do harm. So I th find that there's a bit of a watch guard when you have a soul that's right. just still being a bit hard headed. Have you noticed that at all? You know, from my experience, and I've done many different readings, I've never had a situation where it, a, a soul will come through to communicate with their loved ones in a way that's been abrupt, harsh, mean, um, wanting to rehash old things. It's never. Oh, happened. Yeah. I don't think that they want to, but I do think because that soul's learning and because the person hearing it might still be afraid, those angels are there to kind of keep right. everything smooth. Not that they're wanting to be harmful in any way. Right. Yeah. It's just, uh, so from my experience. So I, from when I work with the, the spiritual world, they know what is in your best and right alignment. They know what's going to help you in the healing. And so from my experience, that's what they do. They work in it in that way. I know we're ready to. Oh, yeah. In just yeah. a minute, a few minutes. Okay. Um, so yeah. uh, they don't come and, and try to force you to do anything or bring up or hash out what they did. They don't, it's not like talking to your human parent. It's talking to an evolved being that knows what is important for you and your healing from my experience. Well, and a lot of times they say we travel in soul groups of about 5,000 or so, you know, sometimes, right. And so what happens is they might've been a mother or father or sister or whatever in this lifetime, but in another lifetime, they were a cousin or an enemy. And another lifetime, they were a best friend or a partner. Another lifetime, they were just the baker in your town, you know? So there are, um, keeping in mind that this is just a soul on a journey like you, mm -hmm. they're not locked in to always being your, your parent, <laughs> you know, they are just a soul on a journey. Yeah. And when we unwrap our mind a little bit around that, we can see them a little bit more differently too, it seems. But that's the interesting thing because we have played different roles. And I always talk about the great cafe in the sky where we're all sitting around drinking <laughs> coffee going, Hey, how about we do this? Which is, you know, I, I believe there's a sense of that. But when you're here and you're still going through your journey and you have effects from your family or whoever that person would be, they're wanting to help you 
because mm -hmm. er, time is not relevant. Everything is not linear. So you can be having a life in my belief system. You can have a life doing something else, but your soul can still be here to help a loved one that's still here on this planet at the same time, mm -hmm. which is to me a very interesting thing because we can multitask as spirit. So the point of that being though, is that we can do many different things. So if you have a need and your loved one needs to come and help you with that particular need, they know how to do it because they already have that knowledge. And that's what they're really here to do is to help us with that, which yeah, I like a, a wiser soul. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah. so, um, stay tuned. We are going to be back in just a moment, um, uh, on transformation talk radio. Welcome back, everyone. I am Adrian, and today on my show we have Joanne Eisen. So, if you're just tuning in, she is a uh, trained medium. She does animal communication. She helps people to shift out their belief systems on a deep soul level, and blends many different gifts together to help a person in the best way that maybe they need in that moment, um, using whatever skill set she has. So, sort of uh, yeah, you got a, a good toolbox there, you know, to be able to help people on a soul level. And um, we were talking about how um, souls on the other side have probably gained a sense of wisdom that maybe us in human form hasn't quite gained yet. Even the most wounded soul, when they might cross over, start to gain wisdom and unravel their life and learn from it. And one of the reasons that maybe a soul will want to communicate to you is that they have wisdom to share. Sometimes I find that they are committed to be of service with you, like the, for instance, in the relationship to my father, it was definitely a very tumultuous and chaotic upbringing with him. Um, and it took me quite a long time to work through a lot of stuff that went on. But eventually when I started doing mediumship with people and uh, helping to unravel um, my relationship with him, because I did have a lot of love for him, he really became one of my greater spirit guides. And I started to notice him you know, I have a special place in my heart for him as a father in this lifetime, but I also see him as a soul, as a master teacher, um, working in the order of Melchizedek energy, um, which is one reason he might've been so chaotic uh, in his life actually, and pushing boundaries with all of life, all of humanity. Um, so Joanne, I have felt his presence the whole time we've been talking and just wanted to tune in to see if you had any messages that you were tuned into on his behalf or my behalf in this moment, just to kind of show people a little bit about what you do or how it works. Well, I've definitely been feeling your father. Clearly that's why I said his name instead of picking somebody else. Mm -hmm. But um, I do feel like your father is around you quite often. He also feels to me like he, you would understand him as in his physical form about, of him being kind of a bigger man. You would understand yeah. him being bigger. He was, and, yeah. and I feel like he also had um, a lot of uncertainty in his life. Like he, he, um, and I feel like that would have come from a lot of his childhood. I feel like his childhood was not the best as well. You would understand. Yeah. With him. And, and I do feel like, um, decision-making with him, he's, he's making me feel like was not always the easiest for him. You right. Would, you would connect with that. The, the yeah. decision -making. And the sense that I have with him is he also, because of his decision-making came from kind of being a, aloof, like he was somewhat aloof with people you would know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the feeling I have with him is, um, he shows me time and the time wasted. You would understand that there was time wasted with him. There was many times where he could have been there and he should have been there and he wasn't there. You would understand that. Yeah. And I also have this sense with you that because he's making me very much aware that, um, you, like you had said, which I would normally tell people, do not tell me anything about your loved one because I want to come up with the information myself. <laughs> so you know that they're really here. But with him, he's making me feel that he really is very much a part of your life. He's made it a point right now to, I almost feel like what he's showing me is like um, standing very securely in the ground with legs of stone. Like nobody is going to move me from my place next to you and being able to forge forward with you in creating the experience that you've chosen to have while you've been here. 
it's all been about your lessons and your learning. And he's showing me that you learned a lot of things that didn't work when you were younger. You learn, mm -hmm. I feel like he's showing me there was a lot of pain. There was a lot of tears. There was a lot of hurt that would have happened when you were younger. Mm -hmm. And he's showing me that um, those are things that you've been able to a lot of the inner work that you've done. And he's acknowledging the inner work that you've done with him, that you've been able to overcome a lot of those things. And it has not been an easy road. And he's also showing me that you've done it pretty much not alone by you didn't have people around you, but alone to the family and the structure that would have been around you to help support you along that path. You would understand that. Yeah. And yeah, he's and, and interesting. Yeah. There was something that recently happened probably, uh, it's probably been about six weeks actually. So I'm 53 now mm -hmm. and, um, I've been working on that relationship with my whole life, obviously. Right. And he died when I was, uh, right around, um, probably about 14, 15 years old in a hit and run car accident. And so, um, in that, um, so it's taken me all this time to gain trust with him. And it was by working with people like you who do mediumship, because he's a, he's a major part of my mm -hmm. life in a way, just because who he is as a soul. Right. So whether it was good, bad, whatever, he was a major part of it. Right. And I do have a lot of love for him. So, but not until about six weeks ago, something shifted and I've been doing some brain spotting stuff. All of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm ready for your help now. Like okay. I've been like testing the waters, let's heal this. Let's look at that. Do I trust you? Do I not? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I'm like, bring it on, dude. I'm like ready to go. You got things you want to help me with, help me with anything you can possibly help me with. And it was such an amazing feeling because in a place where it felt like there was kind of a breakdown of not having the father that would have been so supportive and just all the chaos and craziness that went on. All of a sudden I did feel like I had a very firmly planted father figure behind me, which was just a nice feeling to have. I mean, sure. I'm hyper independent and can do a lot of things on my own, but to actually have a support system, you don't know what you're missing until you actually invite it in like the family constellation work. Mm -hmm. And it's been life changing. Like there's like a part of my heart that feels more whole bringing them in, even though there was quite a lot of painful things that happened. It was well worth it is why I'm telling people it's well worth it. And I can feel the difference. Well, the thing that we have to realize is that this is our lifetime right now. This is what we're experiencing right now. This is not who we are. This is the illusion of right now. Mm -hmm. And so for the lessons that we learn, it's so, so important for that healing because it helps us as we evolve as a soul. So it's so important that in this lifetime, you try to tie up as many loose ends as you can. So you don't bring them into the next lifetime. You don't have to yeah. revisit them. And that's why it's so important when you like with me, I had the similar relationship with my father where I didn't trust him. I didn't like him. I didn't want anything to do with him. And like you, he's one of my biggest cheerleaders. He's with me all the time. He's always there to help me. He's always there to give me information. And I trust him. And that again, didn't happen like you overnight, right? It was that, that process of yeah. him interacting with me and me feeling his energy and his communicating with me and, and not about, I'm sorry, I was a jerk. I shouldn't have done this. Not about that. That's not what they come back to do. It's about, mm. this is what you experience. This is what I experience. This is how I can help you to unfold the story that you believe and how I can help you change that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anything else on his behalf before we shift gears? I just want to make sure that energy is complete. No, it wasn't complete. <laughs> he wasn't done. <laughs> right. Again, he's a very chatty kind of person. So he I'm like, chatty for it. And he, let he, him he, talk he, it all out or I'm going to have to listen to it while I'm sleeping tonight somehow. So <laughs> he wants it to come out very strongly. Um, so he is showing me though, you know, when you're on a track and you have a hurdle race going, right? You have the hurdles. He's showing me that you have many hurdles in front of you, but the thing about it is that he has you way far back and you're not really taking off to get the momentum to jump the, the hurdles, but he's making me feel like once you get that momentum, he's saying, you're going to be just fine. You're going to slide right over them. So don't worry. But the thing is, he's telling me that you're holding back because of disbelief, uh, because of um, anxiety because of um, uncertainty. And that doesn't need to happen because the other thing I feel like you would know about him, you would understand that I feel like he would have made decisions or he would have done something pretty abruptly. Would you understand an abruptness with him? Oh, he was very abrupt at all things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Part so of the chaos. Yeah. He's saying 
you're being too much the opposite. You're like analyzing it too much. So you need to get a, that balance between having the confidence to be able to take off because once you take off, you're just going to fly. So you have to kind of get that balance between knowing when and when not to do something. Mm-hmm. But don't sit in the not to do something category. Right. You, you yeah. Get into the middle of the two. So mm-hmm. he's saying you're going to be fine. You just need to have that confidence to take off and go, and then you're going to start soaring. That's awesome. I love that message. So thank you to my father. Thank you to you for sharing that. Yeah. But it's nice having somebody that you trust that has the clarity, you know, because mm-hmm. I could sit and meditate. Any of us can and listen. But I think because of our personal relationship in human form, sometimes it's nice to have somebody just kind of validate something. Um, the information's already there, but you're right. kind of validating stuff in the energy that has been kind of coming up for a couple of weeks even. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that. Yeah. It's nice to have uh, in human form, we're all sort of benefiting one another and it's nice to uh, have that. Yeah. My little kitty's come back around again. I think she's got to say hi to you. Hang on a second. Hang on. Oh my goodness. Lily. Oh, little oh, Lily. Lily. Lily, Kent. Lily. Yeah. Yeah. She's got to see you in human in form in your <laughs> video form. That's Joanne. I love when I first saw her picture in the first mm-hmm. time too. Hi, Lily. Do we yeah. chat, Lily? We do so chat. we're going to, um, yeah, we're fixing to switch gears here a little bit to what you do with animal communication. Cause I find that's a fascinating thing that also really, uh, helps people see reflections of themselves as well. So is there any last kind of inspiration or guidance you have for people who maybe are on the fence about wanting to try mediumship and giving you a call and just trying it out? I feel like uh, mediumship is something that people are afraid of for many different reasons. And a lot of it has to do with religion, but even in the Bible, mediums were there. They just were labeled in different ways. So medium, how were they labeled? Like for instance, a seer, a sage, a shaman, a shaman, shaman. shaman. yeah, a priestess. Yeah, yeah. Even uh, kings would do it from time to time as well. There's so many different ways mediumship was used, Mm. but you had to be in a certain kind of hierarchy to do it for it to be okay. If Mm. you didn't fit in the hierarchy, then you were considered to be evil, which I always found very fascinating, but we could always have a conversation about the Bible. I would be totally up on that. (laughs) Okay, so another call. We will open up the uh, <laughs> the yeah the uh, whole Bible. We'll, we'll get into that next time. But mediumship has been around for a long time, and it's something not to fear because a lot of people feel like you know, like I just had a conversation with someone yesterday about how do you know you're not going to get evil spirits that are come through? Right. I know oh, we all have. Um, I've just uh, we got to go to a break really quick. <laughs> I lost track of time. Um, we're going to go to a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment uh, to go into that conversation. <laughs> right, welcome back. I am Adrian. You're listening to My Wild Magic with Adrian on Transformation Talk Radio. Coming into our last segment here of our podcast today with Joanne Eisen. She is. Uh, she has a website. Can you tell people how to get in touch with you, Joanne, if they wanted to work with you um, one-on-one or check out the show that you host? Yes, I have pretty much it's across the board, Reach the Unlimited. Uh, my email is joanne at Reach the Unlimited. Uh, my website is actually being worked on, but there, my old one is still live. You could find me there at reachtheunlimited.com. I also have a show that I do on Facebook and YouTube called Reach the Unlimited. And again, I was one of my passions. Um, I do it weekly on Thursday at four o'clock. Usually I do interview people all over the world. So sometimes it changes its time and date, depending on who I'm speaking to and where they're from and what the time change would be. But you can find that at Reach the Unlimited as well. I do have an Instagram and LinkedIn and, you know, everybody. And it's all Reach the Unlimited. So. I love the consistency. What great marketing <laughs> is that, right? Reach the Unlimited. Exactly. Yeah. Positive message out into the universe. Well, you know, that's what, uh, when I started it, that was my dream is to reach people to see that our thought process doesn't have to remain the same, that we can change. Because that's been my journey is to, and I like to challenge myself. And I started my show based on 
what can I really do to challenge myself and shake things up? So I called a friend and said, hey, do you want to do a live show on Facebook? And she said, sure. And then I never stopped after that. And you've been on my show many times. Yeah. And, and again, so just tell me a little bit more about that, that you're really help wanting to help people. Like, like, it's like, there's a several things that you do. One mm-hmm. is if somebody is looking for peace or connection to somebody on the other side, mm-hmm. but you really kind of bottom line, do soul work, helping people mm-hmm. to have, to reach their unlimited basically. And right. sometimes to do that, we do have to unravel old belief systems or emotions or things that hold us back. So tell me a little bit about the process that you do with people. Well, one of the things I like to do is start from where you're at, because when I started my journey and when you were working with me in the beginning, I would challenge you because I was so unaware and unbelieving of what possibilities they really were. And I'm totally for that. I would totally accept that because your process has to go in the way that is right for you. And, and mine was my own unique process. Yeah. So what I like to do is listen to what is the best process for you to be able to unravel because everything we have in our belief system at this moment is usually given to us a lot of people unless you've really done a lot of work it's been given to you by somebody else so what is actually your belief system and what is something that you hold on to because of you've had it all your life you've been and you don't even know you don't know what you don't know kind of thing exactly so it's not like i challenge people like i challenge myself but i will be I do like to give people things to think about, different ways to look at things. See, the thing is about it. One of the things that helped me to change was the definition of insanity just kept on going through my head. I'm doing the same thing over and over again, and nothing is changing. I'm not getting happier. I'm not moving forward. My life is the same. Nothing is changing. What do I do? Well, I have to change it. And that's what started Reach the Unlimited. It's like, what can I do to shake up my whole life? And it was start this show. And then that just perpetuated a whole new life change for me. And so that's what I like to do is help people to say, what do you, what really makes you happy within you? What really strikes a chord with you? And if you could tap back into that, then you start tapping back into the truth of why you're here and what is the purpose for you being here and then unfolding that from a higher perspective. Yeah. And I do find that one of the things that's quite beneficial, um, that is a kind of a trick of the trade kind of thing in spirit work is asking questions. Yes. What would it take? What would this be like? What if this was different? Any kind of, you know, how, how can that happen? But anytime you say the question, you know, what would it take to blah, 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 whatever it might be, right? You know, what would it take for me to live at my highest vibrational residence? What would it take for me to um, make an extra $2,000 this month? What would it take for me to um, find the perfect car that I want next car I want to buy. What would it take for me to start a podcast, whatever it is, then what happens is the soul, the universe, source energy, your tribes, councils of life answer. So I like how you're saying that you do challenge people in the way of maybe asking questions. Like you're not projecting onto them. You're not, you know, you're really asking questions to get them to think, like you said, outside the box. Mm -hmm. You have to, or you're going to keep continue to have the same result. You have to go outside the box. But the thing is to go outside the box doesn't mean that you have to commit to something. It just means you're exploring it. You always have that opportunity to go back into the box. So I never like to push people beyond what feels comfortable. But I know when I first started working for you, there were times where are with you, there were times where I didn't even know how to begin to go forward. And that's where I like to help people because One of the things that helped me, and I'm going to give you this little tidbit that really was a big help for me, is just asking yourself every day, because sometimes you're moment to moment, right? We all have those moment to moment time periods. What is the most loving thing for me to do? You cannot believe how many people don't know how to answer that. And Mm -hmm. I've never forgotten that years ago, you told me that. And that's what I live my life by. What is the most loving thing for me to do? And it's not about selfish or self-centered or Mm -hmm. egotistical, or it really comes from your heart space, like really tapping into your heart space and asking your heart, 
what do you want to do? How do you feel about this? How does this make okay. you feel? And you're listening to, again, you're back to a Claire, you're listening to how does my body feel? What did I think when this happened? What did I feel yeah. when this happened? How did my solar plex feel when this happened? I mean, it's like you, you go back into your heart space and if you listen to your heart and if you listen to your gut, it's never going to lie to you. Never. It doesn't. Yeah, that's so true. You know, and it, it is, it's like getting beyond what we think is true or what we've been told is true to figure out what the truth really is. And so often I think as children, we're told, you know, don't cry, don't mm -hmm. laugh, don't, uh, don't act out, uh, quiet your voice in the house. Uh, you know, um, you know, you're, don't be embarrassing. Don't do all these things. Right. Yeah. But that really shuts down a lot of a child's instinctual knowingness of who they are and how they figure out who they are in the world exactly. is through the interaction of knowing this is how my body feels. I don't want to eat green beans. This is how my, uh, this is the feeling. This is kind of scary to me, you know, and then, you know, kind of letting that, that, person. So it's almost, I find that doing the question of what's most loving, what would it take, you know, for this to happen? It's almost like raising ourselves all over again. It it's is like raising ourselves, growing ourselves up again from a perspective that is in alignment to our energy. And I feel like people have to be really patient with themselves because one of the things that I would do when I was in the beginning of my process was I could start seeing at some point the end result. And then I was in a hurry to get to the end result. And we're not in any hurry. We just need to take our time and do the process that's working in the now and not try to go beyond that. And that's what I would do. Like, oh no, I wanna be way over there right now. You know, you throw that big fishing line out there like, no, I wanna go catch that. And you can't, you, because one of the things that I've learned, if you don't do the inner work, you're gonna continue doing what you're doing. So you have to understand the why, the why do you do what you do? And that's what I like to help people see the why. And then when you start understanding the why, then you're able to go back and start unpacking them. Why do I do this? Oh, I do this because of that. So what would it look like if I did this? Like you said, having your, you know, the path of how you can move forward, the why's yeah. you just the where's. And it's nice to have a coach. It's nice to have like a life coach, a soul coach, somebody who kind of brings you into it. So again, if people, um, so you also do animal communication, if people have pets, sometimes that's a great way to kind of begin a journey is just, if you have stuff going on with your animals, because they're a very intimate part of who, of your life, uh, yeah. there's mediumship working with people, maybe who've crossed over. There's just the soul coach work. Mm -hmm. where you're working with people just on their day-to-day -day lives and all the techniques that kind of go along with that. So again, can you tell people how to get in touch with you to look at their web, your website, to see all that you do offer and your shows? If you pull up reach the unlimited, you're pretty much going to find me. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm there. Uh, reach the unlimited.com is my website. Um, you can find me on Facebook and YouTube at reach the unlimited as well. I have all of my shows that I've been doing from almost the beginning, I believe. How many years? Oh, <laughs> it's been about five years now that I've been doing. Wow. It. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Some of the more original are on my actual personal page, but then I developed the, the business page. So I don't know. I think that's like three or four years that I've been doing that one. Okay. And all of my interviews are housed there. So you and reach, uh, I think on YouTube, there's only maybe two or three years back, but my Facebook page on Reach the Unlimited has more of the whole history. So Reach the Unlimited will reach Joanne. And yes. if you're wanting to set up a session with her, check it out. Please go there. If you're interested in uh, coming into my Wednesday meditation group, you can go to myworldmagic.com underneath uh, My World Magic membership. Check it out. All right. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Joanne. It was an honor to have you and a pleasure. And uh, yeah. So we will have you back to talk about the Bible. Yes, we will do that. I love talking about that subject. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for and having me. says goodbye too. Bye, Lily. Okay. Thanks for tuning in to My Wild Magic with me, your host, Adrian Cobb. Each one of us has a sole purpose on this earth and a higher purpose full of creative expression and unique soul attributes. Make sure to tune in next week on TransformationTalkRadio.com to continue your journey home to your truest self and pursue the path of unconditional self-love. If you would like to learn more about me, visit MyWildMagic.com. Again, that's MyWildMagic.com. Dot com.